In February 2024, I released a documentary, Pignorant, to expose the reality of gas chambers used in the slaughter of pigs. I also showed the abuses they suffer in factory farms. And more than that, I included a small segment on abuses in a so-called free-range pig farm. As shocking as this glimpse was, it was just a small slice of an in-depth 10-day investigation, which lifted the lid, not just on individual abuses, but the whole systemic scam that is free-range pig farming. This is the full story of that investigation. June 2022. The site is just off the A47 in Norwich, right next to a Tesco Superstore car park. We had a tip-off from someone saying they'd seen sick and dying pigs in the field beyond. Not something they were expecting. This was a free-range farm. Free range was the sort of thing you'd see idealised in industry videos. We're deeply aware of our responsibilities and seek to lead from the front in the pursuit of better animal welfare. Putting aside the fact that most farm pigs end up gassed, cut up and eaten, the tiny minority raised free range was supposed to be living the dream. So why was someone seeing sick and dying free range pigs? We decided to have a look. It didn't take long to find the abuses I revealed in Pignorant. This looks like a sick pig here. She's sick. She's foaming at the mouth. There's something over here. There's a dead pig here. Their eyes have been pecked out. They've started to decompose. It was clear this farm needed a full investigation. All right, Thursday, 2nd of June. There's our live location there. There's the Tesco Superstore, which you can just see over the hedges there. And there's the A47, bang. The site was basically a line of 14 sheds. And from what we could see, up to around 200 pigs per shed. We were going to check them all out and get documentary evidence of exactly what was happening here. Then, later down the line, we could show it to an expert and find out exactly why. Starting at the top of the site with a foul smelling metal bin. Oh my God, come and have a look. So here we have a, a dead bin. There's got to be two or three dozen dead wieners in here. These aren't little piglets. Um, they've been so sick, they've just suffered and died. You can see some of them are emaciated and there's, you can see just skin and bones. It's absolutely shocking. Now you've got an open range with all these pigs out in an open range and there's just neglect and bins full of dead animals that have clearly suffered to death. That would be question number one for our expert. Why so much death on a free range farm? Looking at the state of the pigs, wide variety of clinical science, there's obviously a lot of uncontrolled disease here. Dr. Alice Bruff used to work as a vet in the pig industry. Part of her job was inspecting free range farms. The environment in a sort of zoomed out way probably looks okay, but it's, I think, 200 pigs per pen. That's a massively inappropriate grouping firstly for the pigs but they're also just in a small patch where they would normally roam for miles a day in small groups so pigs as well root in the ground and natural behavior is to root so they they quite quickly churn up ground which is why they keep moving in the wild um, but obviously here it just creates a load of mess <coughs> it smells like dead bodies and rotten feces it's really it's horrible here. Pigs are coughing, they've got like pneumonia or something, they're looking really sick. Oh my God. The, the diarrhea. And obviously this girl with diarrhea is, is stuck in a pool of her own feces and others feces. This is shocking man. And if you've got pigs that are sick, kind of placing themselves over by the feeder or the water, 
um, there's potential for that to become contaminated. Everywhere we looked, there was something bad. There's another pig here, very sick, um, neglected. What's going on here? It's okay. You can feel this baby's spine. There's quite a few emaciated pigs, aren't there? Either it's due to them being sick enough or injured enough that they can't actually reach the food, or they might not be able to take in the nutrients, absorb them from their gut if they've got severe gastrointestinal disease. Sick pigs, wounded pigs, dead pigs, and worse. Cannibalism happening on a free range bacon farm. I've been in factories, pig farms, and rarely see dead wieners being eaten by other pigs. Like this, this is what you see in um, factory farm horror stories. This is the same things happening in these free range places, they're sick. Worse, it's just disgusting. A lot of them were terrified of us. She's protecting her friend here. It's okay, we're not gonna hurt her. See, look. They're both protecting her. They're all coughing. And it looks like she might have pneumonia or whatever sickness these other pigs have. But yeah. They're trying to get her up. They're trying to get her up. She's nuzzling me. She needs help. She can barely breathe. Like We see quite a lot of pigs wheezing, breathing difficulties, coughing, usually as a result of pathogens. Um, pathogens endemic to UK pigs, which remain endemic because of the numbers and the ways that we're farming them. These animals need vet care. They're suffering and dying in here. This one's got a massive hernia on their back. Look at that. That hernia at the back is an inguinal hernia, so that's his scrotum that is filled up with guts. So the, the colon or the intestines will push through the body wall if it, there's a weakened area um, and sort of fill up his scrotum. The one underneath is an umbilical hernia. The, the kind of intestines have pushed through the body wall underneath. Um, they're really common in commercial pig farming. It's probably a number of factors. So genetically, in selecting for extreme rapid growth, we might have selected for um, being prone for, to hernias, so weakened body walls. And we've got a lot of coughing as well. So coughing, straining can, can kind of push, push on the body wall and make it more likely to kind of tear and let those guts through. There's another pig behind me that can't move their hind legs and they're shaking. That was when I saw the pig, whose story I briefly told in the Pignorant documentary. She's cold and scared. You can see they have some type of spinal back injury, something's happened. I've seen this sort of injury a lot on farms. She also has some scratches down her back, so it's possible that she was mounted by the boars in the pen. Pigs in the wild live in small family groups um, and they will roam for miles a day and they will seek they'll seek out kind of separation from different groups. Whereas here, you've got up to 200 pigs in a pen. If one female comes on heat in a pen full of what could be 100 males, she might actually be raped to death, so crushed and suffocated or injured like this and then have to be euthanized. Um, and it's something I have seen a lot. She'd be terrified. I don't know. Imagine being kind of unable to use your lower half and then be taken away from the pigs that you know, your, your pen mates, um, and having to try and drag yourself around without the use of your lower legs would be absolutely awful. Look how terrified they are. 
It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> what do we do? I, I mean... This pig needed professional help. At this point, I hadn't yet met Alice Bruff, and I was in a real dilemma. I don't know what to do. I wanted to report this to the RSPCA and get a vet out to give medical treatment to this pig. But that would mean the end of investigating the farm. I had a decision to make. In the meantime, we set up a hidden camera to see what the farm workers did about her. Then, on the way out, something extraordinary. This is the pig that we filmed before. The pig can hardly breathe. Many of the pigs we'd seen had been terrified. This one seemed to be trying to make contact. She wants help. I really didn't think she had much longer to live. And there was nothing we could do. So what do I do about this? How do I do this? As to the lame pig, I decided to get help and called one of my experienced contacts. They said the chances of the RSPCA or a local vet making an emergency visit for a farm animal were nil. So the investigation continued. We're just at the side of the A47. We're gonna see how these farmers act around these pigs and why they're being neglected so badly. But right now, I'm going to try to see what this farmer's doing. Um, put some eyes in the sky. At first glance, not a lot to see. No sign of any farm vehicles or workers, nor the lame pig. I'm gonna go check to see if this poor pig is still been left there. At the spot where we'd seen her, past the shed on the right, just beyond the metal feeding bins, nothing. We'd have to go and take a look. Let's go straight down there to see if she's down there. Okay. So at about 7.30 that evening, we went back onto the farm. Okay. What's this here? Look. But there was a lot more stuff to document along the way. More sick and dying piglets. Jesus Christ. There's another one back here. There's loads in here, isn't there? Look at that one. This is the piglet from yesterday. That was our poor little darling yesterday that was struggling for breath. It seemed sick animals were just being left to die. Oh uh, I'm just gonna see if this pig has actually been just suffered and died or has been shot. See if there's an exit wound. On the other side of their face. It looks like there isn't. We were now at the place where we left the hidden camera. So I'm pretty sure this is where the, uh, the paralyzed pig is, or was. You see it? No. She was right there. Yeah. Yeah, because she was biting on that uh, bit of ho hose. Yeah. yeah. She's not here anymore. There's more dead scattered around. Feels like they're culling these piglets, but I don't have the evidence. I don't know what happened to this one. 
but um, we left a covert camera, so we're gonna check, check the footage. On our way out, we checked one more place. <coughs> oh my god. This is the one. The one with the paralyzed back legs is in here. But that's definitely her. She has got the, yeah. the injury on the back. Yeah. That pig wasn't sick like the others, just paralyzed. So I was pretty sure she had been killed. I can't see. I couldn't see any bullet holes. So the question was, oh. how? The hidden camera came on with first light. The pig was still there, alone, apart from a gathering flock of crows. Sensing a feeding opportunity, probably. Then around 7.15, general alarm. This would be our first chance to find out how the farm workers were interacting with the pigs. Immediately, we saw bad signs. First, the pigs were clearly terrified. Second, the farm worker didn't spend one second checking out the pig's condition. Worse, he was sadistic. Then, after about two minutes preparing the feeding bins, he came back with an iron bar. hated watching this. It's hideous, it's categorically illegal. There's no excuse for resorting to a kind of slow and half ass beating. His aim is terrible. After kicking her and then watching her try to get away, it would have been obvious that she needed restraining for euthanasia. You know, this is, again, a requirement. You must restrain a pig properly to euthanize them. In my Pignorant documentary, I could only show a few seconds of the attack. He's hurt his leg. In fact, it went on a lot longer. At this point, the pig was left twitching for two whole minutes. And then he was back with the iron bar. He doesn't check if she's dead. He doesn't do any of the kind of um, blink response checks to see if it's worked. Um, uh, he's just got absolutely no regard for her. You know, that wouldn't be a one-off that he's done that. No wonder, no wonder those pigs were so protective of each other. No wonder they were trying to protect each other from, they thought that we might do the same thing. They're very smart animals, pigs. The pig then continued twitching for another two and three quarter minutes. I'm gonna take him down to the dead bin. Between the first blow landing and the pig finally lying still had been five minutes and 14 seconds. It was that sheer cold-blooded callous cruelty that made it so horrifying for me. Absolutely shocking. Absolutely just... That's absolutely shocking. I just, like... I can't frankly believe that people like this aren't locked up. So next question, who was running this hellhole? A 
few hundred yards from the pig sheds and connected by a track was a group of farm buildings. A long brick barn, straw bales, various outbuildings and a green shipping container. The shipping container, judging by the signage, the lights and the security, was a portable office. And nearby on the ground, someone had dropped a piece of paper. It was a transport note from February that year, recording the movement of 180 pigs. For something picked up off the floor, it was very revealing. Starting with the destination, slaughterhouse operated by pilgrims, the same company whose gas chambers are exposed in my documentary Pignorant. At the top, the farm sending him off to be gassed. Hartford Farm, complete with address and postcode that matched the location, and the company that owned the farm, Norfolk Free Range. A bit of digging into Norfolk Free Range brought more surprises. According to an article in the Eastern Daily Press, the owner was an award winner. 2016 Pig Farmer of the Year. Heading up a huge business with 41 farms across Norfolk and Suffolk. Holding 9,000 sows and 70,000 growing pigs. Supplying high-end customers such as Waitrose, McDonald's and Chipotle. What got him the award, according to the article, was a commitment to herd performance, team building and animal welfare. 26. Watch what he's about to do. So far, what I'd seen was bad. You got a metal bar. Was it typical? I needed to take a more sustained look at Hartford Farm and the company's commitment to animal welfare. That meant surveillance. Days and hours in the bushes with a telephoto lens, making sure I couldn't be seen. Starting early in the morning, watching every single thing that went on in that farm. And not budging till all the farm workers had gone. First thing, the same worker we'd seen beating the pig to death appeared. It was clear he had a number of things to do. First was opening up and filling the feeder bins. Then, as he went from shed to shed, he'd go into each one and have a brief look around. Sometimes he had a metal rod casually using it to prod and smack the pigs as he went. The award-winning farm owner had said that some of his team were rough diamonds. Maybe he was thinking of this guy. You've got the man going in there to inspect, covering his mouth and nose, and you can see a lot of dust and stuff coming up there. They look quite nice from the outside, but on the inside of those tents, the atmosphere is very, um, you know, poor air quality in my experience, very dusty, a lot of ammonia, so this like layer of urine, feces, dead pigs occasionally, and they're sort of living on top of that, so the, the air quality is quite terrible in those tents sometimes. When we looked around we'd seen lots of sick pigs, but it was clear this didn't interest him at all. The only thing he did was retrieve the dead ones, one after the other. We counted them. By the end of his shift, he had a total of six, which he threw in the trash, and then drove up to the farm buildings. And that was all that was done for the pigs that day. Day four, the rough diamond was back, doing the rounds. Except today was about water rather than food. He was putting something into the drinking butts, presumably some kind of medication. And so far, the only sign of anything at all being done about sickness in the herd. Like yesterday, he looked for and removed the dead. 
We counted them up as he hauled them out. Nine in total. At one point, he washed his hands in the pig's drinking water after handling the corpses. The way that he washes his hands in the pig's water is disgusting. The water shouldn't actually even be open like that. It should have a, a lid to seal it off. You think about the fact that there's highly pathogenic avian influenza everywhere at the moment. Um, birds can very easily be defecating into the water. And pigs are a perfect mixing vessel for avian, swine and human strains of influenza. So this is a pandemic waiting to happen. Add to the fact that he's handled dead pigs. We have no idea what those pigs have died of. And now they all have to drink that contaminated water. Well, it's extremely careless, probably lazy and pretty reckless for human and pig health. We'd seen everything the rough diamond had done. After he'd gone, we went in to see what he hadn't done. Straight off, we were seeing disease and suffering that he just walked straight past. Holy shivers. Oh my God. Uh, completely emaciated, skin and bone. Oh dear. They're slowly breathing, very shallow, and they're uh, knocking on death's door. It's shocking. Irregular breathing. Visually look in pain and uncomfortable, sore back legs and they can't get up. And one of their siblings is like staying with them to support them for comfort, I suppose. Nearly a week after we first saw it, nothing had been done about the hernia. Some of the pigs were dying right in front of us. This one here's just dropped on the floor. They're just dropping like, so fast. This one will be dead probably by tomorrow. <coughs> Holy no. Just 15 minutes after we first saw them, dead. the emaciated pig had died. They passed away with no compassion, with no help from a vet. This is just shocking. We'd seen the farm worker collect and bin nine dead pigs that day. But it looked like there were some he'd either missed or not bothered to move. Their eye has been eaten out and the pigs are just cannibalising this pig here. The cannibalism worries me. It's everywhere. It's pretty much on every pig farm, I would say. And cows eating cows brought us BSE and pigs eating animal products brought us foot and mouth. You know, we're, we're not, we're, we're dicing. All right, it is Thursday, the 9th of June, at uh, quarter to five. Let's see what happens today. That day, there was a new face. This time in what were evidently the company overalls. The routine was familiar, medicating the water, doing a rapid check of the sheds. In one, he kicked over what appeared to be a dead body. But he didn't move it. He's pulling out the two dead from yesterday now. The one that died while we were there, got hauled out. Okay, he's grabbing the one that was dying when we left yesterday and he's throwing them out of the pen there. That was a total of six picked up by the farm worker. But as we were getting to realise, the real total was always a lot more. Look at this. It's like an absolute graveyard out here. <sighs> Another little baby dead out here in the field. 
The UK dares to say they have the best welfare standards in the world. If this was happening at a sanctuary, the sanctuary would be shut down for neglect. But it's okay to happen at pig farms. Sickening, absolutely sickening. Okay, I'm gonna jump for a moment to something that happened a lot later because it's very revealing. Some months after we'd finished filming, we came back to the farm complex. Someone had left the office door unlocked. So we dropped in and found some very interesting stuff. First up, in big letters. See, this says, must use a captive bolt or a shotgun. Manual blunt trauma is illegal in England and Wales. So, our rough diamond knew perfectly well he was breaking the law. The rules about fitness for transportation were interesting. That paralysed pig was not a one-off. We've genetically manipulated pigs to kind of create the pig that we want, that is very prolific, so it has loads and loads of piglets and this kind of built-in desire to eat constantly so that they grow and grow and grow and that makes them prone to joint disease, joint infection, joint injury. And confirmation that not only are hernias common, but below, a certain size still gets sent to the slaughterhouse. With larger hernias, there's obviously a risk of them rupturing, packed in, they might be trampled on or eaten by other pigs. And breathing problems should be considered because, as it notes, without any irony, sudden deterioration during transport could lead to death. So what about these pigs that can't be transported? There was a health plan following a vet inspection in October 2022. It said, pigs found to be suffering from acute disease or injury that are judged to have little chance of recovery should be humanely euthanized. It referenced a document from the Pig Vet Society, the Casualty Pig. We looked it up. It says, any method of killing a pig humanely must ensure that the pig becomes unconscious immediately and remains unconscious until it is dead. This is a legal requirement and that the pig is not handled roughly or frightened before they are killed. It then shows exactly where to put the bullet, in the forehead just above our level. The health plan also detailed a cocktail of antibiotics apparently in use on the farm. I don't think people buying free range or organic or higher welfare pigs would expect this level of kind of medical treatment of the pigs that they're buying. It says that going into the feed is a chlortetracycline, tylosin. We see the doxycycline being put into the water in the footage. And then in the office as well, you've got an opened amoxicillin and a lincomycin, which is yet another type of antibiotic. So you've actually got in use, apparently, on this farm, five different types of antibiotic, which are delivered en masse. This is a nightmare from a, an antimicrobial resistance perspective. So this is the reason that we're heading for an antibiotic apocalypse. So is anyone even checking up on Harford Farm? Yes, in theory. There was a red tractor certificate. Red Tractor is a scheme set up to reassure the meat buying public about animal welfare on farms. The Red Tractor logo certifies that everyday food and drink has been produced to independently inspected standards right across the food supply chain in the UK. All Red Tractor animals are treated with compassion and have everything they need for a good quality of life and immediate treatment should they become ill. There was a Red Tractor vet report dated just four months after our investigation. The vet doing the inspection was apparently satisfied with the management of sick and injured pigs and that the farm's euthanasia was carried out competently and in line with the farm's policy using only legally permitted methods. And if that's not reassuring enough... And here we are, RSPCA assured. Believe it or not, the charity set up to protect animals runs a scheme to guarantee the welfare of animals that are going to be killed. By choosing the RSPCA assured label, you'll know you're supporting higher welfare conditions for farm animals. You can really make a difference to the lives of farm animals. Each time you pick an RSPCA assured product, you are supporting farmers who give their animals a better life. There was an RSPCA assured assessment report from just two months after our investigation, 
According to the inspector, no non-compliance issues were seen during the assessment. We also saw transport records that told us exactly how the pigs we'd filmed ended up. Most went to the nearby town of Spalding, to a slaughterhouse run by Pilgrim's Pride, the company whose use of gas chambers I exposed in my documentary Pigroom. The rest went to Watton, to a slaughterhouse run by Cranswick Country Foods. I know there's a gas chamber here, because in 2023, me and my team investigated it with hidden cameras. So all the pigs we filmed were gassed, and 510 of them uttered their last screams in this exact gas chamber. The method is RSPCA approved, and it looks like this. First inhaling the gas, and finally lying still, is on average between 30 to 40 seconds of agony. so much for free range animal welfare. Day six brought even more insights on Harford Farm's commitment to animal welfare. There were two workers in Hart Farm overalls. He's dragging out dead. One was the guy we'd seen the day before. And this time we saw him do something we knew must be happening, but had never actually witnessed. We saw him walk straight past the clearly emaciated pig. And then, one of the ones we'd seen with a hernia. The hernias are really common. They're also a massive problem because they can rupture. If that hernia gets large enough, it can literally open up and there will be intestines outside the body which usually ends in other pigs sort of trampling on them if they're in a, an enclosed space which is one of the most horrific things I've ever seen but it's certainly not uncommon. Look straight at that sick one and left them. No vet care, nothing. As ever, it was all about the ones that had actually died. The other worker was a woman. She was distributing straw, and the way she did it was pretty revealing. Many times she'd just drive straight into a shed that we knew had not been checked for sick or dead pigs hidden under the straw. In one shed, she cleared pigs out the way by dropping the straw bale to ground level. She was just as reckless with the way the straw was spread around using the forks to sift it, regardless of who was underneath. And backing the tractor in and out, relying on the pigs getting out the way. Now you could imagine at a sanctuary if they had that big machinery operating near all those pigs, you'd have someone minding the pigs while they do it, like, like getting them out of the way and looking, looking out for them. And then another moment that showed just how callous the treatment of animals could be. In one shed, she got out of the cab with the same kind of metal rod we'd seen the rough diamond use. She's bashing someone. She's beating a pig up. Then, about 50 seconds later. She's dragging it out, see? Bang. Still moving. Still moving. Still alive. She just seemed so comfortable with that, eh, that it was actually quite disturbing. 
A while later, she was talking to the other guy, quite possibly telling him about the pig she'd just beaten. As though all this was just a routine part of farm work. For the second time in a week, we'd seen a pig beaten to death on a farm owned by one of the biggest free-range pork producers in the UK. I knew once I exposed these abuses, they'd say this was just one rogue farm. So I decided to find another of their farms and compare. Finding out who owns a farm isn't straightforward. They don't advertise themselves. So we did some research and identified another of their farms in the Norfolk area. First impressions? A lot healthier than the other place. Just looking around the outskirts for dead. Could probably have a little look in here, see what's up. If there's any dead, you'll be able to smell it. In fact, not much sign of sick or dead animals at all. But something was definitely not right here. Look at them running, dude, eh? Like we're like 100 meters away from them and they're terrified. Sure sign that the, um, Farmers are doing something to them they don't like. At the sanctuary, when I go to the sanctuary, <laughs> they're definitely not scared. Not like this, at all. At the sanctuary, you can walk straight up to them and they don't move, because no one harms them at the sanctuary. But they are terrified of us. Um, then we started getting clues why they were acting so jumpy. All right, so, Tarion, has just spotted dead bins, just over there. Very good spot, and we're gonna go, go have a look. Ugh. All right, I gotta brace myself for this. This one's unlocked. Shot in the head. Shot right in the head. There was clearly a lot of shooting going on here. This is not good. This is filled to the brim with dead babies. That was shot in the skyway. That's a new dead baby there. God, that's all foaming and worse. <laughs> Didn't want to see that. Here. Yeah. It wasn't surprising the pigs were scared of us. They're intelligent, sentient beings with a super sharp sense of smell. If they're hearing other pigs being dragged off screaming and being shot and dumped, they'd be traumatized. Quite close to the farm was a breeding unit. We've got a bunch of females with stud boars. By a twisted irony, it looked very much like the model farms we'd seen in industry videos. Clean, calm. In fact, you could shoot one of those videos right here. Hello darling, how are you? So long as you kept well clear of any dead bins and didn't mention how all these pigs end up. They do look a bit skinny, don't they? They've got a spray paint on their back. Sometimes it means ready to cull. The mother's being worn out um, from bearing so much young. They're just being used up and up and up and up, continuously impregnated, dried out, impregnated, dried out, piglets taken, and then they go to the slaughterhouse, be turned into sausage rolls like cheap meat. But the main goal is to breed 
piglets who'll be grown for free range bacon, free range pork products, you know. The, the flesh from the mothers and the spent boars is your secondary product, you know, which is why it's cheaper. This free range organic scenario might look like idyllic and better than, you know, welfare wise than a farrowing crate, we can agree there. The underbelly of this is quite sinister, actually. And uh, especially when you, you know where they're going. They're born here, they breed here, and the only way out is when they're shot in the head or gassed. That's the thing the industry videos don't mention. Dress them up how you like with words like free range and humane. These places are animal death camps. Our last ever view of Hartford Farm. The rough diamond was back. This is a farm that gets inspected on a regular basis. What the hell do the inspectors do? What's for sure is they don't camp out in the woods with telephoto lenses or plant hidden cameras. For Red Tractor and RSPCA assurance, you just have one annual pre-arranged inspection a year, and then you'll get four vet visits a year, also pre-arranged. So they get a lot of opportunity to clear up the farms, pick out any dead pigs. They would probably euthanise a lot of pigs that didn't look very good. And the key thing here is that there's, there's no way to enforce anything and you can't see what's happening the other, you know, 361 days of the year when you're not there. Once the pigs we filmed were gassed, some of their flesh ended up neatly packaged on the shelves of Tesco's and Morrison's. They'd be labelled free range, carry a red tractor and or an RSPCA assured logo. And you'd be paying extra to be told the animals had happy lives. But the reality is free range farming comes with most, if not all of the same issues that you see in intensive farming, uh, because we've got the same genetics of pigs. All the same sort of pathogens are circulating. So a lot of them come from the same breeding herds, the same boar studs. There isn't really a farming system in existence or one that could be created that would be completely appropriate for their needs. You'd probably have to have acres and acres of woodland for a handful of pigs for it to be anything like what they would naturally need and you want to keep them in their little family groups. Even if we were to provide that, they still end up in a gas chamber fighting for their lives or being electrocuted and hung up to have their throat slit at a fraction of their natural lifespan. So there's nothing, nothing we can do for them that would be objectively described as humane. The fact is labels like free range and higher welfare aren't really about the animals. They're for people. The consumers get the reassurance it's okay to eat animals killed for meat. The industry can carry on making a profit from the killing and bodies like the RSPCA get a nice little earner from the use of their label. It's win-win for everyone apart from the animals who have no voice. That's why places like this need to be exposed. And guess what? There is something we can do for the pigs that you could call humane. And that is just stop eating them. Simple as that. <laughs>